everyone. I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Municipal Court's special problem-solving court is kicking off the planting season at their community garden. The garden, sponsored by the Friends of Kansas City Problem-Solving Courts, began in 2013 as part of the drug court, but it has expanded to include participants from all three problem-solving courts. This is the first thing I ever started and finished. It let me know that I have a new beginning. A very new beginning, just like this dirt. At one time, I probably would have been in the dirt. I probably would have ended up killing myself drinking so hard. It helped me to get my life together and think clearly. As you, while you're doing the work, you start thinking clearly and thinking about things and ways to make your life better. It taught me that uh, seeing those plants and vegetables and stuff grow, that I could grow also. The space for the garden is provided by the Kansas City Community Gardens, and it has doubled in size over the past two years. The garden was also the recipient of a 2014 Sustainable Success Stories Award from the Mid-America Regional Council. Um, you know, we're always looking for ways that we can uh, increase just pro-social activities, getting people involved in something that maybe they've never been involved in before, an outlet to be able to, uh, you know, work in the community and be a part of a project. Something about working in the dirt, uh, you know, also is just a very therapeutic to people. It helps them, you know, to kind of have another outlet to kind of therapeutically get to a place that they feel, uh, you know, very peaceful. The city participated in the American Heart Association's National Walk at Lunch on Wednesday. Not only was the weather perfect for a stroll, but a recent study found that taking a lunch break walk helps lift your mood and your ability to handle work-related stress. The city tries to ensure that our people not only provide the best city services in the uh, country, but they're also the healthiest in the country. And I think we're well on our way to doing it. We've got a great team in place to help us do that. And I appreciate all of you coming out and doing this. And getting a little bit of exercise by taking advantage of our beautiful parks and our beautiful downtown. So go for a walk this week. The weather should be great. On Saturday, May 16th, Cycle in the City will transform a portion of Ward Parkway to a family-friendly open streets festival from 2 to 5 in the afternoon. From Meyer Circle Fountain to Gregory Boulevard, the event will feature a variety of free, family-friendly activities. These will include the opportunity to bike, walk, roll, stroll, jog, and play all along one of Kansas City's most beautiful thoroughfares. Cycle in the City is sponsored by Bike KC, and it's free and open to all ages. Now, as we check in with some of our city's departments, let's start with the celebration of the Kansas City Streetcar's first platform and station stop. I'm Tom Garand, the Executive Director of the Kansas City Streetcar Authority, and on behalf of our Board of Directors and our Chairman Tom Trabon, I want to welcome you to our first completed streetcar stop. Little applause, come on. Great. So, so why are we here? It's, it's obvious. We're building a streetcar in downtown Kansas City, and we couldn't be more excited. It's going to be a two-mile modern streetcar line. It's going to improve our local circulation in downtown. It's going to connect activity centers such as the Crossroads, Union Station, Power and Light District, the historic River Market, and it's going to serve as a catalyst for continued and sustained economic development for years to come. Let's not make a mistake, this is a hundred year investment in our downtown and today we reach a significant milestone on this journey. All told we will be constructing 16 station stops along the alignment and 13 of those will have shelters just like this one behind me. The look and the feel and the design of this stop was no mistake. The goals are that this be timeless, sophisticated, progressive, confident, technologically advanced, and regionally coordinated through our Ride KC partnership with our friends at the KCATA. I want to give special thanks to the Downtown Council and our Aesthetics Committee. Lots of folks spent lots of time on the design of this station and platform to make sure that it fit within the downtown context and that it was an asset that we could all be proud of. And thank you to the KCATA for their support in this effort, for acknowledging this is a part of a regional system. Don't let the critics fool you. It's not either or, it's both streetcars and buses. Uh, we're going to be successful together. 
I would be remiss also if I didn't provide a few brief acknowledgments uh, before passing the torch. Uh, Mayor James and the council, uh, we'll introduce them in just a moment. Uh, without their true leadership, without their involvement, we wouldn't be here today. This is not an easy feat. You've read in the newspapers. It's challenging, it's tough. It's the price you pay for progress. And so let's give an applause for Mayor James and council leadership for making this happen. Thank you very much. Um, just a few more, um, often unrecognized. Uh, there's also a number of folks from the Kansas City Public Works Department. And you all should be very proud of the Public Works staff for how they've managed, how they've driven this project on time and on budget. It's been a pleasure from the authorities' perspective to work closely with them. And again, you should all be proud of the professionalism they bring to the job. So thank you to the Public Works Department of Kansas City, Missouri. Well, good evening and thank you for being here. I, uh, I want to start, uh, start first by thanking my teammates on the council, uh, especially uh, Councilman Russ Johnson. Russ Johnson, yeah, deserving of more than one hand for sure. Russ uh, is uh, one of the smartest people I know when it comes to transit, and he has been uh, the spirit behind this entire endeavor. But I want to I want to take a moment and ask you if you would please just look around and take it all in. All right, I mean seriously, look at this. We got cranes and stuff in the air down here. Okay, uh, that's something special is happening in this city tonight. Uh, and I want to thank everybody for coming out and being a part of it. Uh, this is really more than a simple celebration of construction on the streetcar, although that is certainly in and of itself worthy of celebration. But this is the next phase of a bold vision for Kansas City. It's a vision about leading our city into the future. Everybody here has seen progress unfold right before our eyes. Uh, within blocks of this streetcar route, New investments since 2012 total $1 billion. That's billion with a B. In addition, when this route was laid out and when the construction was done, there's been a, an additional $22 million worth of water and sewer infrastructure placed in such a way that if something happens along the line, you don't have to tear up the line to replace the water lines. All of this, all of this is before the very first passenger has stepped foot on a single streetcar. We've got more than 45 new projects downtown. 23 of them have no incentives. That's pretty good. And all of that construction has been since August of 2013. It's more than just about the buildings, though. It's more than just about all of the economic activity. It's about people deciding that downtown is the place to build, the place to expand, and the place to live. That's because downtown, once a ghost town, is now the talk of the town. We are witnessing history, and it's right here in the very heart of our city. And I believe that one day we're going to see some of these same types of things that are happening downtown happen in other parts of this city when streetcar goes there as well. The streetcar has brought a tremendous amount of economic activity, excitement, and interest to downtown. But I've always believed that what we have done together is more than about simply building something like a streetcar. At the end of the day, this streetcar is about who we are as Kansas Cityans. It's about the people who live here, the people who work here, the people who play here, and the people who come here to explore our city. Residents and visitors alike will be able to take in some of the best restaurants, performing arts venues, concerts, and attractions you can find anywhere in this entire country. And we've got them right here, right adjacent to the streetcar line. This is how you see a city being built for the next 50 years. That's what it looks like. And don't forget, too, that the streetcar is really more than just rides up and down Main Street. With Cisco, the Kansas City streetcar will be the backbone of our smart and connected city and will be the largest and best open tech platform in, the, in the North America for the Internet of Everything. I want to say that one more time because I don't think you got it, okay? We will be the only North American city to be a smart city. There we go. 
Now, in Kansas City, we've given up this whole concept of trying to think outside the box because we realize there is no box. Most of all, it's about a bold vision and an image about what we're all about in this city and what it will be for the next 50 years. We should be proud of what we see around us. We should all be proud to be Kansas Cityans. Kansas City is on the move, and very soon the streetcar is going to be on the move, too. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for believing in our vision, and thank you for being great Kansas Cityans. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Spring is in full swing and KC Parks has many fun events and activities for you to take full advantage of the season. All aboard on Saturday, May 9th for a National Train Day celebration at the Kansas City Northern Miniature Railroad in Frank Vedic Park. The fun begins at 10 a.m. with live music by Rockin' Rob, face painting, free train rides, giant inflatable trains, and more. Train Day birthday party packages are available this year for even more fun. Visit caseyparks.org for all the details. Purchase an all-access pass and gain membership to all 10 Casey Parks Community Centers. All-access passes are good for admission to fitness centers, open gym, public ice skating, and select classes. For a limited time, you can save $150 on an annual all-access pass. A better you is in reach, and for less than a dollar a day. Purchase your all-access pass online at caseyparks.org or in person at any of the Casey Parks community centers located throughout the city. To learn about other events scheduled by Parks and Recreation, visit the department's website at caseyparks.org or give us a call at 816-813-7500. The City of Kansas City, Missouri is now calling for nominations for its Casey Green Neighborhood Recognition Program. It's part of the City's Casey Green Initiative. The program recognizes neighborhoods that have implemented sustainable practices. Applications will be accepted until June 2nd and forms are available at caseymo.gov. Just search for Neighborhood Recognition or you can call 816-513-3460. The Casey Green Initiative works to advance social equity, economic vitality, and environmental quality by promoting sustainable practices in projects and programs citywide. For more information about these stories, please visit our news release page at kcmo.gov news. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kcmocco. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.